So welcome everyone to this FPGA stand-up meeting for phase four ground and space. This is a meeting that captures the work over the past week and then the work that is scheduled or expected to be done over the next week. And then we discuss any roadblocks or resources, uh, roadblocks that need to be removed and resources that we that we need. So, um, so Paul, please, please start us off today. Okay, we've made a little bit of progress in the remote lab getting things set up for remote FPGA development. Um, a lot of this is documented in a document that I published a draft of on the remote labs part of the repo on GitHub. Uh, it includes how to get uh, authorized to use the, uh, the floating license for Vivado and also how to access the VMs that are connected to the development boards in the San Diego lab. Um, that has <clears throat> recently become more working than before. <laughs> um, the problem was that these guys hook up through USB ports. There's uh, two USB ports on each dev board. One is for the JTAG interface and the other is general purpose UART. Uh, in one case, it's four general purpose UARTs. Um, and we're running into this virtual environment, the virtual machine, uh, and a virtual machine dealing with the USB device is a little bit dicey. Uh, turns out when they come and go and uh, change configuration, the VM can get confused and even refuse to boot. Um, but there's a, a great workaround for that, which is to assign the entire USB controller to the VM. Um, we were running out of USB controllers for this purpose. So I located a card, uh, relatively inexpensive USB interface card that has four ports, each of which has its own controller. Um, so I got one of those cards in the machine and assigned one of the controllers to ChacoCat, which is gonna be responsible for developing on the ZC706. And another one of these controllers will be allocated to a new VM, which has been dubbed Kerapi. And it will be responsible for the other dev board, the ZCU106. Yes, I think it's ZCU106, the that's right. Um, and that seems to be working. We have not done a lot of testing with it yet, but the uh, but Vivado does come up, does recognize it. Clicking on the auto connect does connect and you're able to download code through the JTAG interface. So if that continues to be the case, then we've solved this problem with USB interfaces. And in a few minutes here, I'm going to be setting up the, uh, the Karapi VM and we'll have two parallel VMs with similar settings, except one will be connected to one of the dev boards and the other be connected to the other dev board. Um, further developments on this should be coming fairly soon. I'd like to experiment with running just the hardware server part of Ivato on the VM. And then you'd run the main GUI part of Vivado on your own PC to get the local reaction times and uh, larger screen sizes and so forth. And then just go over the network to the hardware server running on the lab PC in order to access the hardware. I think that might be better, might be worse. We'll have to try it and see. Um, that may not, it's not the only way you'd want to use it probably unless you have a a very powerful PC at home, you may want to connect to the VM just to run big processes like you know, synthesis on, on the more powerful PC. Um, so we'll have both methods uh, ongoing. I think that's everything I had to cover. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, that's a really good summary. Yeah, my, uh, my, the past week, I've been helping with this uh, sort of, sort of thing. Uh, we've learned a, so. an awful lot and, and, found some some ways forward as as described so uh, so i'm looking forward to um to the test that will happen today yeah okay so so Anshul, um yeah. tell us what's uh what's been going on what you have planned and if you have anything that's a roadblock or that you you need any resources that you need um so i've uh completed the coding for uh, initial GSE encoder, and then uh, based on my understanding, I've complete I've coded for BB frame formation, so stream will flow from um, sync to GSE encoder to BB frame, and then we should get BB frames. Uh, now I'm working on test bench. 
uh, so they provided me a skeleton test bench for GS encoder. Uh, I'm enhancing that. Uh, so far I have tested. Uh, so initially the GS encoder will start with a header and then whatever it receives, uh, it just attaches the PDU uh, behind the header and passes on to PD frame. So the header part is working fine, but when the data parts, data part come, I'm facing some timing constraints in my test bench. So I'm trying to resolve that. So yeah, and plan is uh, to get this uh, test bench working for GS encoder, then get a test bench for BB frame, and then move on to zinc part for DMA data. That's all. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Is there anything that you that you need uh, done this week? That anything? Anything that you need us to do this week to support you? Uh, no, I think it's fine. I may have some doubts, so I'll reach out to Suwato for that. Okay. All right. So speaking of uh, Suwato, please let us know what, what you've been up to, uh, what you have planned, uh, any roadblocks you have that need to be removed or any resources you need. We can't hear you, Soto. No, nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so it's in chat. Oh, no, not again. Oh, dear. Okay, <laughs> so let's go ahead uh, to Shamundra and uh, for, for FPGA work. Um, what have you done over the past week? What are you planning to do over the next week? Uh, any roadblocks you need removed or uh, any resources you need? Oh, I don't hear you either. No audio from you either. I heard a thump. Nothing yet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're tired of, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, no, I think it was working. Um, okay, so. Um, let's try it. Oh, okay. there you go. You are now back. It's uh, Windows. I mean, we'll chalk it off to Windows and I'm getting okay. <laughs> my own voice. No, I, yeah, so over the past week, um, some experiences with the new Windows machine that I have at my desk have yes. given me and you ha you documented the amazing issues uh, with right. the update from two weeks ago. So we'll, yeah, and, we'll blame and Windows. never never download Vivado ever again, please. It's, I mean, just, uh, just so now you're part of the club. Yes, very much yeah. so because all of my time uh, among the field work that I do was literally fixing Windows or fixing Vivado 2021.x, which blew up 2020. Yes. Point two, but the the so, the software tries to upgrade things. So I've I've just come up with a strategy which I just like to share with you guys. I've gone to the old software, our, old version, archived my key projects. All right, <laughs> keeping track of the hardware definition as well as the uh, Vitus definition, uh, the right. projects, Vitus project, hardware projects. I've called them differently now, and I've shorten their file names to four four characters hex characters just based oh on dear. the data code to get rid of the problem yeah ex the of the long of file the... names yeah exactly so just basically a short code that way i could track which one went to where because if you try to upgrade and it you know it will try to upgrade it will lock the ip that i developed the custom heartbeat the custom things thing and then you have to like figure out okay down the stack, how do I release the IP or upgrade, refresh type? It just needs a version change. So unless we're doing command line control, um, and I apologize, I'm just hearing myself. I'm just, it's just upsetting my train of thought. But the fact is that if you're, if you're going to maintain this development pathway over several uh, years or until the mission is, is done, ready for flight, then this kind of upgrade issue will affect everybody because I'm trying to save my stuff of last yes. year. Yes, <clears throat> yes, I think you're you're right on on target with a with a thread of discussion that is um, almost perennial in this field, and that is how to manage the 
this is true of also GNU Radio. So this oh, happens yeah. there yeah. too, where yeah. you the 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 development environment essentially, like the tool chain, needs to be fixed. Um, and right, we have right. So done that. Uh, but but you've got images, but you've got the ability to generate images on your chalk. Well, you know, the chunk, chunk okay server. so yeah that's what i was getting at the 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 original idea was uh that you would log into a virtual machine uh, on a powerful pc that's that's running uh ubuntu and that the the you'd log in and run vivado there and that would reduce the the pain that you're describing yeah. uh, and it would fix the version so we'd say okay we're going to use this particular version with this particular hardware that's physically connected to this computer running right. this vm now the the probably the a, a better way of doing this is to to have you have a hardware server running so if avado is running just a hardware server that is uh, bringing up the the hardware and that you'd run vivado locally on your own machine Okay. and then connect the hardware server on the virtual machine that we have in the lab. Now, what that means is, unfortunately, each an individual participant has to download Vivado. Now, they can download Vivado, it's the, and they, if we tell them what version to download, then, then at least that fixes that problem. And we do have a floating license, so anybody that is running then runs the script, and they have a license that allows them, you know, all of the the, the privileges that the license gives. So you're able or, to write or to they could a download the part. image, uh, Michelle, or they could yes, download the image. Yes, or they could download the, the image. That's that's true. You know, so right. I mean, if, if, if you've got hard drives on the big server and you sort of like take a snapshot of that VM, copy paste it into something called generic. I've done this myself. I mean, not for the FPGA, but for my C, C development code and all that that I experiment with. But that way, at least you know version X or package X and version X is there in that image. I, mean, yeah. I can use it. I can run it on my VM. I mean, then then I don't have to worry about, for example, um, Digilent. They have PMOD modules. Well, the version changed in Vivado. So why am I going to have to actually go back to Digilent to update? Because they had to right. refresh and the IP got locked. That, right. I just discovered that. It's just annoying because yeah. so you have to go back and forth. From a so from an open research institute perspective we want to make it easy for people to participate so we're working as hard as we can yeah. to to make any and all of these options work for 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 anyone so i so i'd like to volunteer I, i'd like to sure. volunteer if you if if you can give me a, access to a copy of an image of a machine image that that's currently the dev mm -hmm. machine then let me download it and I'll use my 12 gig whatever machine to just spin it up. So I'll be a virtual copy of whatever you have in the lab, just just as is. Because I've got I've got a um, board here. I've, I've got a zinc board here, not as powerful as everything else, I, but I've got a, other FPGA boards here, but I can at least run it. Okay. I can compile it and run it, but I just yeah, let's, we'll take it. that. Let's, we'll take that off and, and discuss and, and try to see if that's a, a if, if that makes it easier for you to participate, then great. Yeah, but so, so far, you know, the the things that we've been able to accomplish over the past week have been uh, very positive and yeah. moving in the right direction. Um, I think with the addition of providing just a hardware server and having, if people have a local powerful copy of Vivado, then they're able to participate as well. Right. But just so getting it, access it, to the to the ZC706, the, the board that hosts the analog devices, yeah. and having total access to the, the radio functions of the daughter card is a big step forward and not done. I mean, this is not really yeah. available so anywhere else. Can, can I request an addition to your workflow, um, BITE, uh, if Anybody is familiar with the abbreviation? It's 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 understood, but built-in test equipment. So, uh, Anshul is talking about test benches during the development process. But could we, maybe I should I, I should try writing it up as a as a separate module. But we could add in a few signal lines um, to the FPGA uh, uh, block diagram. Bring in bring out some signals into a block. Thereby, in the future, we can put a um, Modbus module to just get that telemetry. Is is the encoder working okay? Is are the frames clocked okay? I mean, oh, anytime yeah, you're doing I, yes, yeah. I think the short answer to that is yes. Those are functions that we fully intend to to do. Okay. Uh, just 
because they're useful and you need this sort of feedback. But can I ask, like, perhaps Paul or Anshul, like, if it's running, what do you expect as hardware signals? I mean, I mean, just generally, is there a provision for us to just do hardware monitoring, say, okay, system's working, it's drawing power, it's generating bits, it's stuff like that? Uh, perhaps, Paul? We, we don't have anything particularly for that at the moment. You'll uh, be able to see that the board is there and powered on just by the fact that you can connect to it. Um, in terms of other fun levels of functionality, that would depend on what you put into the board. I mean, if you had a, a bit stream that had some functions in it, it would have to output some some values to like monitor health. Like for example, could we at least, I mean, just in case of any future telemetry downlink that we actually get the status of the system, because uh, you're putting so much effort into it, what would you like to come back down to ground so that you could say, yep, it's working correctly and it's framing and there's no sync errors and stuff like that? Yeah, the uh, that's pretty. I think that's pretty far down the road into details that we haven't specified yet. Yeah. And, um, not, not shouldn't matter to the. Hello. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Oh, oh cool. Um, <laughs> so, um, answering your question, uh, uh, I've put in the encoder. Um, I call like an um, access stream debug. It's basically uh, it will count frames, words, uh, and give some functionality for debug. Like uh, I can enable like block the flow, or enable words, or enable just uh, a frame through kind of thing. Okay, so, so perhaps there we could uh, counter the spread. Bring them out in into a data block uh, register just just stuff them into a register somewhere a uh, register table we have enough probably onboard um block ram but if we could do that then uh, the stuff that i'm doing uh, guys like building my own modbus system I, I could actually you know give you that that would be useful so that you can get it as telemetry streams locally hardware or to the ground mm -hmm. if you want to yeah cool yeah uh, I don't know what, how, how the full extent of like things uh, that we're gonna you know numbers we're gonna uh, monitor and things like that, but it, it, yeah, it is a good start. Yeah. Okay. Well, th that could be one one little thing. I mean, I I propose it, and you you guys could cut and paste the idea or something. Okay. And it can also be done from Zinc. Uh, I mean, uh, we can write simple Python modules or something to get the data from FPGA and then- oh, I mean, you're talking about the PS? Process. You're yeah. talking about the, the Zinc PS? So question is, do you want to implement Modbus master on your, uh, 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 you know, on your device so that it actually collates all the uh, traffic and then puts it on a, on a hardware line for communication to the radio? Uh, I need to look at the design details to specify, to uh, answer you properly. Okay, so if if I come up with a sketch, please do yeah. correct it. Okay. Sure. Okay, and that'll be good. That'll be that'll be fantastic. That'll be professional from space, debug telemetry from space. Yes, yeah, telemetry. I think that's a just a, a good design practice thing to have. Cool, Andre, look, uh, take uh, you have oh. the floor. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I um, will not try the video, <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> so I I tried the, the whole uh, remote accessing the license with Bivado and, and it worked. Uh, I got the project compiled. Uh, I exported uh, to the Vitis uh, IDE and th things like that. Uh, this is where uh, generally, you know, when I when I'm working someone from the software team would kind of take over so but i think i kind of know <laughs> the steps um i'm trying to get it to the card and you know see it's working and yeah see if it's alive right um, yeah awesome okay yeah we'll pitch in and, and we'll help you however we can so and then now you have been able to use dvb dvb ip and um uh, join it with uh uh, AD card that we have, and then make a complete running module. I I didn't get to that. 
so uh, my block diagram is very it's basically uh, there is a component called i don't remember the name that is basically i i will stream data in and map data out to another fifo and just you know it's just a loop okay. um, just to get the logic working because i, I can then compare with GNU radio and basically mm -hmm. see the counters and things like that uh, okay. and once that uh, looks like it works then we can uh, start trying to put the um, yeah, the radio side okay Awesome. Um, can I ask a question? Uh, very simple. Uh, the DVB frames have they got embedded time codes or just video? Any any data frames in that? DVB frames don't have time codes. Oh, they don't. Okay. No. no. So nowhere in the stream is any time code embedded. It's just like the no. sequence of frames. Yes. That's that's the whole purpose of DVB. Yes, Michelle, you can explain. Yeah. That's yeah. the protocol. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you put, if you stream data, you can put timestamps into that and or sequence or things like that. But yeah, the, the DVB itself doesn't have that notion. Yeah, it's not built in to DBB yeah. S2 or S2X. Yeah. Okay. You wouldn't want to put uh, one in every DB frame anyway, because they're too small. Yeah. In, in GSE encoder, we have fragmentation ID to, to take care of multiple streams. And once they are accumulated into BB frames, even that goes. Oh, wow. I was just hoping for a chance to actually sync with a clock somewhere. I mean, in the future. I'm just, I'm just thinking far ahead. Another machine, yeah. but okay. But yeah, then you will be defeating the whole purpose of this protocol. It's clock independent. No, I mean, I understand clock independence, but I'm just saying that if time can be extracted from the frames. Got it, yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's sort of more of a system level question. I'm not too, I don't, I'm not qualified enough to. Yeah, uh, but we, yeah. we do have a few people we have a few people on the project that are are interested in sensing and ranging, you know, doing doing timing yeah. ranging and, and yeah. all of that. And there there is some tricks that you can you can do with um, with coding and and you can do it with uh, the DBS too. So I'll 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 send that to you. Um, but mm -hmm. it's it's a some assembly required on yeah. that yeah. on that one. Uh, but but the the there isn't anything that just pops out that's not done for you in this particular protocol okay i i understand embedded time i just thought that having a station out there at high altitude would give us science capability if we had a local time reference there N not free floating but actually sink to ground so right okay. i think if, if you had uh, like the iq stream you can probably derive a, uh, derive the like you have the phase, mm -hmm. I don't know, my DSP. Uh, I, I was actually I, studying I, I the CCS. Uh, I was actually studying the CCS DS, uh, the, the, the notes by Dr. Mills of NTP. And he wrote in 2018, you know, stuff that we have to do in order to get time out there in space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's non-trivial. It's, it's non There's a lot. It's non-trivial, but it's this. really needed. There's a lot yes. of work that has to be done still in that area. So science. Yeah. Okay. No, there's I, a but, there's a number it, of people it, on the it, team, and I'll 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 put you in touch with them to okay. to see uh, to see if there's something uh, that that you want to do that they're already done or know about uh, to see if we could get any traction for you. Okay. Thanks. Sure. All right. Any. Any roadblocks, any resources that's needed, uh, any concerns that I need to know about? Yeah, I don't, I don't have any. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. This is a, a, a true joy to, to work for you all and to, to help you achieve these goals. Um, we're getting an increasing amount of attention for the work and a lot of interest in, in using it. And I'm looking forward to being able to present a lot of it at Ham Expo, at DEF CON, and at some other uh, events in the, in the autumn of, of uh, 2021. Great, looking forward to it, okay. Yeah, all right. Um, See and, you all. and do you need volunteers to maintain the booth? 
Absolutely. Yeah, we, we really kind of do. It's uh, yeah. the booth at Ham Expo will be super fun. It's a really good experience. Um, so yes, if you're interested in, in showing up, putting in a shift, then you're more than welcome to. And there's a, a will be a wide ranging discussion with a, a, a river of people uh, that are all interested in what we're doing. All right, so okay. see you all Great, on thanks. Slack. I'll uh, close out the meeting. And if there's uh, if there's anything else that's needed or that you that occurs to you from the discussion today, uh, just bring it up and we'll get it done. There'll be more okay. updates Great. about the thanks. improving the accessibility of remote labs and making it possible to use all the FPGA tools uh, coming up here over the next few days. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye. Cool. All right. See you thanks. soon. You. See you. Bye bye.